So last time we talked about joint probabilities. The probability of x and y. <clears throat> and we talked about uh, uh, joint information. If there are different labels, xi and yj, for these different possibilities, we have the joint information with i and xy is just the ordinary information defined over this joint quantity, x and y. p of xi, yj, logarithm to the base 2, p of xi, yj. And I defined something I called mutual information. So mutual information is just the information in x on its own, the you know, amount of information you get if you look at this variable x. If it's a binary variable, which like a coin flip, it could be up to a bit, but it could be anywhere between 0 and 1 bit of information, plus xy minus i of x and y. So it's the sum of the individual informations of x and y on their own minus the joint information. And this is defined to be the mutual information, which we designate by having a little colon, i of x colon y. Now, I argued, but I didn't, not very convincingly, I believe, <laughs> that this quantity measures the amount of information that I get about x if I look at y. It also measures the amount of information that I get about y if I look at x. And it also measures the amount of information that x and y, in some sense, hold in common. Um, so let's explore that notion a little further. And we're going to do it in the following fashion. So we're going to define a conditional probability. The probability of y given x. So if uh, in what we've been using before, this is the probability that it's raining given that it's sunny. Okay. Small in most places, but actually not that small in Santa Fe. Um, still reasonably small. Okay. Now, what is the probability that it's raining given that it's sunny? So a, a nice way of looking at that is we look at our little diagram before. So here's the probability, the whole set of events where it's, it's sunny. Here is a whole set of events where it's uh, raining. And this is a set of events where it's raining and it's sunny. So if we want to actually get the conditional probability that it's raining, given that it's sunny, then what we have to do is we have to look at the probability that it is raining and that it's sunny divided by the probability that it's sunny. So this is just an identity. It says that the probability that it's, that it's raining, given that it's sunny, is the probability that it's raining and it's sunny divided by the probability that it's sunny. This is conditional in for the conditional probability. <clears throat> and we can also define a conditional information. So we can look at the information in y, given what we know that the value of x is xj. Say, remember xj, we added this extra index to say x is now about sunniness or not sunniness. j0 means not sunny. j1 means that it is sunny. And what we can do is we can just take our ordinary formula for information. We sum over the different possible, sorry, I'll call this xi. Excuse me, I was using i's for x's and j's for y's. We sum over our value j for the possible values of y. p of y, j, given, say, that it's sunny, log to the base 2 of p of y, j, given xi. This is the amount of information contained in this variable y, whether it's raining or not, given that I know that it happens to be sunny. Okay, it's just the same thing before, but now we confine our spells. As we just made this this picture from before, this Venn diagram picture. We confine here's x, here's y. We confine ourselves to the world in which it's sunny, and now we look within that world. We look for the the uh, amount of information inherent on whether it's raining or whether it's not. Okay, <clears throat> and similarly. We can look at a kind of average value of this. We can define the conditional information i of y given x on average is equal to the sum over the possible values of x, the probabilities that it takes that value, for instance, sunny or not sunny, 
And then we look at this conditional information of y given x sub i. So this is the conditional information. The information in y conditioned that I know x. <clears throat> it's just a kind of a formula here. But <clears throat> given that the, you know, this very natural uh, uh, definition of conditional probability, which was defined by people like Boole back in the 19th century, we can define the amount of information in y, condition that I know x. It's just the same formula that we always use, minus some p log p. And we have a notion of conditional information. So you can think of this if information measures a kind of variability, you know, how much uncertainty we have of the state of y, for instance, then the conditional information of y given x is the residual uncertainty about the state of y given that we know about x. So let me write this out in a, uh, in a suggested form. So the conditional information of, of y given x, it is the average over all possible values of x, p of xi, and then we have minus the sum, we just have the information, conditional information, p of y sub j given x sub i, logarithm to the base 2 of p of y sub j given xi. Sorry to run off the board. <laughs> but remember that p of yj, this conditional probability, for instance, the probability that it's raining given it's sunny, is just equal to the joint probability, probability that it's sunny and that it's raining, divided by the probability that it's sunny. Now when I pop this expression into here, I get something which is, goes to sum over i, p of xi, and then I have, I'll take the minus sign out front, I have the sum, and I'll, I have the sum over j, now I have p of xi yj divided by p of xi, and then I have times the logarithm to the base 2 of p of xi yj divided by p of xi, as I said, divided by. <laughs> you see that these guys, I told you I use guys for everything, including like in this case probabilities. These guys cancel out. And what I get is something which is equal to minus the sum over j and i, p of xi yj. I have the logarithm of p of xi yj divided by this, but the logarithm of the uh, quotient is the difference of the logarithms. So it's this minus log to the base 2 of p of xi. And when you add everything up, you find that this conditional information is just the information in x and y together, that's this first term, minus the information in x, which is the second term. So we have a really nice and simple relationship which is that this is equal to i, the mutual information, the conditional information in x and y, or sorry, the conditional information of y given x is equal to the information in x and y together minus the information in x. Okay, a little bit of algebra, but hey, I'm sure that everybody out there can take it. <clears throat> So, I claim that we can now have a nice way of writing the idea of mutual information. And I'm going to try to make sense of it in the way that Claude Shannon, who developed the mathematical theory of communication, made sense of this. So let's suppose we have a communication channel. <clears throat> I put in symbols, which I'll call xi, these are now the inputs, and I'm going to get out outputs, which are yj. And for instance, these could just be, for instance, 0 and 1. Whereas before, uh, I was talking about rainy and sunny. Now let's think of the prospect of communicating bits from one place to another. For example, uh, 0 could be the absence of a photon, 1 could be the presence of a photon. 
So I'm going to send information down the channel by taking a particular time slot. If I don't put a photon in that time slot, then I'll call that a zero. If I do put a photon in the time slot, I'll call that a one. So we have a probability for putting in a zero or one, which could, for instance, be a half. And then the channel, the action of the channel can be described by a conditional probability, which could be the probability that I get, for instance, that I get a photon out given that I put one in. So I can describe the channel, if there's some kind of noisy probabilistic process, I can describe it by probabilities for the inputs, which are, could be things, you know, I'm just choosing zero and one with equal probability. And then I have a conditional probability, for instance, that uh, uh, a one comes out given that I, I, a one came in. So if I'm send, sending information by sending photons down the channel, I can look at the probability that I get a photon out given that I put a photon in. Now, <clears throat> we can define the mutual information between the input and output of the channel. Now, clearly, the conditional information is important. If the conditional information is zero, what that means is that if I know what I put in, I know exactly what I put out. There is no residual uncertainty about what I put in. So if the conditional information is zero, that's good for a channel. <clears throat> And a good way of defining the uh, mutual information is to say, let's look at the uh, amount by which looking at the output of the channel tells us what the, about the input. So we have some uncertainty about the input of the channel. Right? Suppose we're the receiver. By the way, these, uh, these channels, the sender is always called Alice and the receiver is always called Bob <laughs> for traditional reasons. I don't know why. <laughs> but Alice is the active person here. She's the one who's taking control of the situation. Bob is simply passively receiving the information. So what we want to say is suppose Bob gets a one. Um, how much does he know about what Alice sent in? So here we have x, I'll call this x in now. This is the uh, uncertainty about Alice's input. But then we have to ask, well, let's look at the residual uncertainty about what went in given about what went out. So this is the amount of information that Bob learns about what Alice sent in once he gets the output. It's the amount of information that actually got sent down the channel and if we use our formula, we see for the conditional information, we see that this is equal to i of x in minus i of x in and y out minus i of y out. This in turn, you see how it's all work, fit, working out here. This is equal to i of x in plus i of, of y out, sorry, I'm not doing a very good job here of writing things down, y out, minus i of x in and y out. And this is just the mutual information between the input and the output of the channel. So the mutual information between the input and the output of a communication channel tells me how much information gets through the channel. It tells me when Bob looks at the output of the channel, by how much has he reduced the uncertainty about what input went in. In other words, it is the capacity of the channel.